Yes, welcome everyone here to the Smash Sports Show right here on Smash FM here on a Tuesday here in Melbourne, of course. Let's go uh, to Adelaide in particular and uh, speak with the, the minor premiers uh, for season 2021, and that is the Norwood uh, Football Club. And, of course, they got a big game this weekend. Of course, they take on Glenelg uh, in the second semi final. Of course, with the win of that game, it's going straight through to the grand final. And, of course, uh, we've got their vice captain joins right now to tell us all about it from the Central W team. Of course, her name's Sophie, she joins us now. Thanks, Sophie, for joining us. Thanks for having me. No worries. Well, uh, Firstly, congratulations on winning uh, the minor premiership, which was all wrapped up uh, on the second last round of the season. But uh, tell us um, how special it's been this season up to this point for this uh, the Red Legs this year. Uh, yeah, obviously um, coming off the back of last year, um, we were quite disappointed to go out in the first round um, of the finals, um, being with COVID and all that stopped that season. Um, so to come out this yeah, um, and obviously currently be the minor premiers is a great achievement. Um, there's still obviously a bit to go. Um, we can't be satisfied with just being the minor premiers. So, um, yeah, it's very special. The girls have worked really hard uh, from the pre-season all the way through um, to now. So hopefully uh, we can keep going and win the big one. Now, I've got a chance to watch probably a quarter, maybe two quarters when I was over in Adelaide uh, when you played against West Adelaide in West Adelaide about a couple of weeks ago now. And the way that you performed in that game um, was, was a pretty, um, pretty good game to watch, actually, as a spectator. But uh, I guess there's almost a bit of a finals preview in some ways to uh, what to sort of expect from... Um, when you got there. Um, what I was impressed with was the way that you shared the ball around. You definitely, um, the defence was probably rock solid, especially in the back line. Was that something that's been worked on throughout the whole season? Yeah, so uh, right from the very st uh, first training session, Matt, our coach, um, did come in with a plan, um, obviously, to be an inside team and also an outside team. So we have worked really hard on um, doing that and working with each other to get the ball um, from one end of the field to the other. So I think as the season has gone on, uh, we have improved quite a bit, um, moving the ball with each other and working quite well together. Now, I know you don't want to give too much away to your opponents uh, this week, <laughs> but uh, is there a couple players in your team we should watch out for when we come out to Cooper Stadium or when people come out to Cooper Stadium in particular this weekend? Um, yeah, I think um, Leah Cutting, she's having quite a good season in the ruck. Um, she's giving us quite good use of the ball um, with her hit outs and stuff. Uh, also, Rosette Zarella down the forward line. She's been on fire um, kicking the goals. Um, so hopefully she kicks a few this weekend as well. Now, your opponents this week is Glenelg uh, in the second semi-final. We obviously a chance to make it straight through to the grand final. Um, I know that you've already versed them twice, I think, already this year. Um, how have you fared against the Tigers? Uh, we've played them the once. Um, the last game that we did play them, it was quite an um, intense game. It uh, came right down to the last quarter. I think we only won by a few points um, in that game. So um, I think it's going to be, again, be another tough game this weekend. They do have quite a number of good players um, and their team just works for each other. So, yeah. Um, it's going to be quite hard, um, but, yeah, we're ready. Uh, obviously, finishing top of the ladder, great achievement. Obviously, you got that got that full back in some ways. You got the double chance um, to uh, to get to the grand final. Are you reasonably happy where you are at the moment in regards to how the season's panned out so far up to this point? Um, yeah, we are pretty happy, uh, but like I mentioned before, we're not satisfied um, with just getting the minor premiership. Um, so, yeah, we want to keep working hard. Uh, we've got a big week on the track this week, um, and then hopefully come Saturday uh, we'll be ready to go and, um, yeah, have a good game. Pretty much answer my next question about how's the preparations <laughs> like for uh, this week's game. So my next question is, um, any injuries uh, in your team that uh, hopefully you might get a couple back this week? Um, well, unfortunately, on the weekend, uh, one of our young guns, Emma Clark, she actually did an ACL. So, um, unfortunately for her, her season's done. Uh, but apart from that, our, um, the rest of the team is pretty fit and healthy. 
Um, so we do have, uh, which is quite good, obviously, coming into the finals. You do want um, everyone on board. Mm. So, yeah. Tell us a bit about your amazing captain, Ali Farrell. Um, yeah, Ali's great. Um, she's quite level-headed. Uh, she knows what to say. Uh, when we're all getting a bit stressed and under the pump, um, she is quite a calming influence, especially on the young girls. We do have quite a young team this year, um, and I think she's just been great for them. She's, yeah, like I said, she's very calming. Um, even as a player as well, she is somebody that I look up to, um, how she goes about playing. Now, you mentioned about, um, obviously, we mentioned about the captain already and the couple of players to watch out for, but tell us a couple of the youngsters in your team that you have, and I believe some of them might have already represented South Australia in the 19th Youth Girls Championships already this year, and tell us who they yeah. are. Uh, so we have Jade Halfpenny. Um, she's just actually won the breakthrough Powerade player last week. Uh, she's quite a strong uh, body player. Um, plays in the forward line also through the midfield. Uh, we do have um, Alain Lishman. We call her Freddie. Um, she's another one that's uh, predominantly forward but can also play in the midfield. Um, and Sarah Branford as well was another one that was in the state team. Uh, she's a winger. She's had quite a few good weeks um, leading up prior to this weekend's game. Um, and we do have another couple of young girls. I think they were too young to be state uh, this year, but Lana Schwert um, is a good one coming through. She's one to watch. Um, and there's another girl called Saatchi as well. She is also uh, a player to watch as the um, years go by there. I think they're only about 15 or 16. So, yeah, they do have quite a few more years left um, in them. Now let's uh, talk a bit about your amazing uh, coach or coaches, I should say, there at Norwood. Uh, that's got you to uh, at least a minor premiership, hopefully two wins away to the ultimate. Um, tell us how important they've been and what has the team learnt from those two coaches, oh, sorry, your coaches throughout um, the 2021 season? Yeah, so obviously uh, Matt Creeper um, has come on as head coach uh, this year. Um, he was at Norwood a few years ago, um, just as the opposition analysis. Um, but yeah, he's obviously come in with new ideas, um, a new game plan. Um, and obviously all the girls are taking that on board. Um, we are playing some good footy, so obviously what he's doing has worked. Um, we've also um, have a few coaches that have been around. Uh, Bod, he's been there um, for the past three years that I've been there. Um, and another guy called Greg, he was also there last year. Um, he, they've also been quite good um, Greg does the back lines and Bod's the, um, the board man that does the rotations. Uh, we've also had our forward coach, uh, Simon. He's joined us this year um, and he's been great as well. Obviously, new guy coming in, he was a bit nervous at the start, but um, he's found really found his feet in the team and um, he offers good advice. Now, this year, considering uh, the Roosters got eliminated, uh, of course, on the last round of the season. Uh, obviously, there's a chance now for that premiership up for grabs. That must be pretty good to not see the Roosters uh, in the final series. Um, yeah, obviously, they were uh, the reigning premiers. So for them to go out uh, before the finals is obviously disappointing for them, but um, it is good for the rest of us. Um, obviously, there'll be a new premier this year. Hopefully, it's us. Um, but, yeah, obviously, it's going to be a tough finals campaign. Um, and, yeah. And for you being the vice-captain of the team, uh, what does that mean to you? Uh, yeah, it's actually uh, quite an honour, obviously, to be a vice-captain, um, especially at Norwood. Um, it's a club with a lot of history. Um, we have been there since uh, the inaugural year of the Sample W. So, to be, at, to be named as vice captain, obviously you've got your, um, your fellow peers there back you in um, and obviously the coaches as well back you in. So, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I think it's just a real honour um, and, I, yeah, I just love leading the girls. And, yes, and you might as well tell us a bit about your amazing leadership group other than obviously yourself and your captain, which we've already mentioned already. Uh, tell us a couple yeah. of the other players that in the leadership group. Uh, well, this year it was only just the three um, named. It was me, Ali, and Alicia Gallagher as the deputy vice captain. Um, she's come in um, new this year. She's been at the club for a couple of years, but she's come in and she is 
she's obviously got a different leadership style. She really gets around the girls and she's all about um, bringing people up with her. So she has been a, a great addition um, to the leadership group. Obviously, we do have um, a couple of players that have been around for a few years now as well. So they're um, also leaders in their own right. So everybody um, is basically a leader. How did you get involved in footy and why did you choose it? Uh, yeah, so I um, grew up playing netball um, when I was younger um, and I moved to Darwin and I took up touch football um, and everything that I could play, I played a bit of basketball um, and a few of my friends uh, had put a footy team in and they said I should come down and play um, and I was a bit nervous at the start because, you know, I was a little girl playing with a bunch of uh, women but um, I took the chance and I went down and played, did a full pre-season, um, but unfortunately the day before the first game of that year, I actually did my ACL. Um, so I didn't end up playing that season. Um, but when I was fit and ready to go again, um, the same friend said, okay, come back and have another try. Um, and so I um, took up footy and I yeah, haven't looked back since. Now, what position do you play on the field? And if you had a preferred position, we would like to convince the coaches to put you. Here's your chance with two weeks to go or more. Uh, well, where would that be? Um, well, I currently play um, in the midfield on ball. Um, and I think that's actually my preferred position because I love getting in, getting the ball. Um, and also, yeah, just being wherever the ball is. Um, so, yeah, I'm quite happy where I am. So hopefully I can keep the spot. What will be some highlights throughout your football journey so far? Um, yeah, so obviously um, I started my football career with the Wanderers Football Club up in Darwin. Um, when the um, AFL women's um, comp was announced, I actually put in for that draft and I was lucky enough um, to be drafted to the Crows um, in the inaugural year. So I was on their list for the first two seasons. Um, so obviously being drafted is quite a big highlight. Um, unfortunately, I did injure myself in my debut game for the Crows. So I didn't get to play in that premiership that they won, but um, to be a part of it was pretty special. Um, and then obviously after um, I finished with the Crows, I've been at Norwood ever since. So, yeah. And what does the sport of football mean to you, especially being there at Norwood? Um, yeah, football um, means a lot to me. I think um, I do like the um, social side of things with all the girls. You do um, create basically another family. It's like a family away from your actual family. So um, I think that side of things is what really draws me to football. Yes, it's fun to play and to win, but it's also fun hanging out with all the girls. And do you have any future ambitions in the sport of football for yourself? Uh, well, the ultimate goal, obviously, is to win a premiership. Um, I haven't won one with footy yet. Um, so fingers crossed that eventually comes. Um, but, yeah, I just obviously like to um, help everyone else around me, especially the young girls, with their ambitions and make them better players. Now, I know we don't want to look too far ahead, so, but if you do end up going all the way in the world this year, what would that mean to you? Well, I don't want to talk too much into that, but obviously that would be um, quite special. Um, but, yeah, hopefully uh, we do. But, yeah, obviously I can't speak about that until it actually happens. Well, hopefully we'll get you back on the show when that does eventually happen. Uh, so <laughs> uh, now what would be your advice to people out there that should get involved in footy, especially down there at Norwood, especially, uh, you know, obviously with now the finals, but I guess for the following season um, when that gets underway? Um, yeah, well, I think um, if you are looking to play footy, I definitely think go and give it a go. Um, you probably won't regret it because um, it is quite fun. Um, you do make lots of new friends and um, every team that I've been involved with has ever has always ever like been welcoming. So I think just go and do it, give it a go. And what's the one thing that you've learned from the sport of football? Um, I think um, hmm, what I learned. Um, I have learned um, that number, like you can try, like you know, skill only gets you so far, but it's the hard work that actually does um, get you the furthest. So, um, can 
obviously you've always got to work on your skills, but unless you're willing to work hard, then there's no point to actually do it. Let's finish off with a couple of lighthearted questions about your teammates uh, there at Norwood. <laughs> um, firstly, who had the most embarrassing moment on the field this season and what was it? Oh, dear. Um, I don't know. I don't think anybody's had any real um, embarrassing moments on the, on the field. Um, yeah, and I know Shay, who's caught the goal, um, she was actually supposed to be in the back lines on the weekend, but she somehow ended up in the forward line. Um, and then she kicked the goal, but then she got dragged off the field because she wasn't supposed to be in there. <laughs> um, so that's, that's probably um, one of them, but she got a goal out of it. So now she thinks she's a goal kicker. Um, but, yeah. Oh, that's a bit cruel. You keep the going and you get dragged for not being in the right position. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, who's the comedian in the team? Um, there's a few. Um, I do think Jay Davies would be up there. Um, she's quite a comedian. She um, likes to play the flute. She has a flute that she carries with her and her. Um, she likes to play it, get around the girls. Um, but, yeah, she also is quite funny. Uh, anyone into their TikToks? Um, like making them or watching them? Either or. Uh, well, I like to watch them. There's a few girls that like to watch them. I'm sure um, the younger girls probably make them, but I haven't um, come across their pages yet, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> uh, and do you have a pre-game superstition or ritual? Um, yes, I do. Um, I don't like to change anything. Um, if something works well, then I don't change it. So um, like my undies and bras and socks, um, even what I do, like if I brush my hair and it works, then I'll um, keep doing that um, before the game. So so what's the pre-game superstition right now? Um, well, I like to have a steak uh, the night before a game. Um, and, yeah, I obviously have the same bra and undies and socks and I don't like to wear um, the, my, like, the warm-up singlet in training during the week um, and yeah just getting a coffee on the way to the game at the same coffee shop am i assuming so yeah yeah same coffee shop <laughs> <laughs> now is there a pre-game song to hype the team up or even yourself before a game um, yeah, the past few weeks we've actually been having um, a bit of a dance party. There's no particular song, um, but just whatever song uh, we're feeling at the time that everybody knows and can sing along to, um, we do like a bit of a sing along in the change rooms before the games. Okay, so perfect segue to my next question then. Any good singers and dancers we should know about? <laughs> Well, we all like to sing. We, I think we can sing and dance. Um, but, yeah, look, um, I'm not really going to name anyone because I think that we're all pretty good singers and dancers. <laughs> good, good answer. That was a very good answer. Well, well, well done on that one. Um, now we'll finish up with this last two, which is now I know that most of your games are live streamed or or at least streamed in some ways. Have you ever watched it back? Is there any funny moments that's happened on your team or the opposition? Um, yeah, so if, um, this year the um, the camera work sometimes likes to zoom in a little bit too far. So um, there has been a few girls lining up for goals and they're actually picking out their wedgies that have been... <laughs> caught on camera so <laughs> I'm not sure if the like the cameraman knows that they've zoomed in that far but um yeah there has been a few <laughs> that that has happened <laughs> yes I I'm not sure <laughs> I definitely was expecting that answer oh um, yeah <laughs> I don't know this this next question is going to be any relevant based on that one um which is <laughs> Does anyone have a fantastic or strange nickname? 
Um, there's a couple of nicknames in the team. Um, one of the girls, uh, her name's Alana, but we call her Freddie. Um, the nickname came about because our last year's coach, Chris, he knew her uncle or somebody related to her and they called him Freddie. So then Freddie has just stuck um, with her. It has no, nothing to do with her or her name or anything, but it's just stuck and she's known as Freddie. Well, so thank you so much for giving up your time to join us. It's awesome having you on the show. Please send our best wishes to your Norwood team for us. Uh, I got a chance to meet some of them uh, after the game against West Adelaide uh, when I was over there. And uh, we are right behind you. So now let's hope you can go all the way and, uh, of course, go all the way and win it all and uh, be the first premiership in probably two or three seasons now. So uh, let's hope you can break that uh, little short drought that you've had uh, in between your first one and obviously uh, hopefully the one that you're going for this year. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And um, yeah, fingers crossed. No worries. And that's uh, Sophie there joining us from the Norwood uh, Football Club uh, in the Sanford W. Of course, uh, if you want to get out there to Cooper Stadium this weekend against Glenelg in the second semi final, of course, we'll put all the details up on how to support the Money Reg Legs uh, in season 2021, especially on their way to hopefully a premiership in about three weeks' time. There's more on the Smash Sports Show right after this. Don't go away here on the 10th year celebration.